Today I want to show you how to use this Google Slides activity, which is a National Park Digital Guidebook. And as I mentioned, it's a Google Slide activity, as you can see, and you're going to want to leave it in edit mode. You don't want to go to present mode. You're just going to leave it as is with these thumbnails on the side. You can change the view if you would like to by going to view full screen if you want to get rid of the toolbars or you can use that same view tab to zoom in or zoom out. Um, you can close the speaker notes. Um, I always recommend saving the, and naming this original version where it's blank and clear and clean and you can go back to it later. And the way to do that is going to file, version history, name current version. You choose the name that you want such as original or blank and then save it which I'm not going to do for this one, but that's what you would do. And then to go back to this original version, you would again go to version history, see version history. And over here, it would show you what it was named, what you've, what you've named it. And you would click on that and then it would have you, it would revert to that. So back to our activity. Um, this is basically a more advanced language activity for, I would say, at least upper elementary school, probably middle school, maybe even high school, depending on your students' needs and abilities. It's a great group activity, um, and it targets goals just like synthesizing information, pulling out key details and main ideas, um, vocabulary and context, um, main idea uh, describing pictures. You could use it for summarizing and just the executive skill of navigating a website and pulling out the important information. So let me show you what I mean. This resource has pages for 10 different national parks, U S national parks, which, um, are on this main page. And, um, these are all clickable. So you can click on the one that you want to go to and it takes you to it. So then uh, they're all the same, except for the pictures on the page, obviously, but they all have a map with a movable pin that you can, um, you know, move to the map to show where the park is located. And then all of these yellow boxes are fillable text boxes. So you can type in them. Now you can change up at the top. You can change the font. You can change the color. Um, the size, any of that, you can change the background of this text box if you want over here. Um, but that's just, I just put them as light yellow to signify where a text box is. But again, all of that can be changed based on what you need. Um, to get back to that home button, you just click here, you would click slide two and it takes you there. Now, the way a student is going to fill out this information is by going to the National Park Service website. So each park links to the National Park Service website for that specific park. So when you click on it, it shows you the blue text there. You're going to click on that. It opens it in another tab. So this is Acadia National Park, just like I was on that page. The webcam also links you to National Park Service webcams, which are live streams. Um, this might not be as helpful in completing this guidebook, but um, it could help with some different, you know, the climate and the terrain and things like that. But it's also just a fun add on for your students to see the park live in real time. So once you're on the parks website, um, <clears throat> you can use any of these tabs. Obviously, some of them are going to be more helpful than others, um, but they all are set up pretty much the same way for the National Park Service. So for example, nature has the plants and animals. Um, so, you know, you can click on that and read through this with your students, um, pulling out the key information, you know, looking at the vocabulary and context and then typing the answers either depending on your students in full sentences or just in bullet points um, over here in the guidebook. I don't foresee students completing all of this in one session. You know, you might just do one here or there, um, but it, again, that really just depends on your students. This is a very versatile activity. Um, 
So, you know, you can complete these text boxes as you go through navigating the websites um, and uh, pulling out that information. So I hope that helps. I also want to show how to do a national park that is not on the main menu. So if you want to do something that's not one of these 10 national parks, you go to this blank one that again has fillable text boxes, but this part is also blank. So you would just need to find the website on your own and, um, same thing. You're going to fill out the text boxes. The way to add photos would be on these gray boxes. You're going to replace these gray boxes with images of that park. So for this one, um, I'm going to right click on that image, hit replace image and search the web and a box for Google images comes up. So let's say I want to type in the grand Canyon. All these are Google images that um, are being pulled for the Grand Canyon. So I could click on the one I want and click replace. And it puts it in place of the gray box. So this is a way to do obviously a park that's not on the list and, um, you know, be able to kind of keep this activity going. If you've completed all of these throughout the year and you want to keep doing it. Um, if you need to undo something, you just click that backwards button. You can make multiple copies of this last slide. If you want to have more than one, um, that are, you know, not in the main menu by right clicking, click duplicate slide. So you can make as many as you want to of that slide. And then if you want to delete it, you just click delete. So that's kind of how to utilize this activity and what it can be used for. Again, I would suggest middle school, um, maybe above or below that, depending on your students. And I hope that was helpful.